We are 5 Mythical Glory players with over 40,000 matches of experience and our goal is to share all the secrets the professional players use to win their matches. Today we will show you how the new emblem system works and which setup you have to use for your heroes. Yes, we will talk about the setup for each and every hero type. But first let's talk about the changes that happen. The new emblem system have less emblems compared to the old one because Moonton removed the most useless physical and magical emblem but also the very useful jungle emblem. This leaves us with the basic common, tank, assassin, mage, fighter, support and marksman emblem. Each emblem grants you 3 basic attributes which in our opinion has a much better balance compared to the old system that gave out 5. Apart from the attributes every emblem has now 3 talent slots that complete the set. To unlock these talents you need to upgrade the emblem first like before. But your levels will be brought over from the old system so if you have your emblems all already on level 16 they will remain like this. If not you can be happy about the fact that upgrading emblems is much easier now as it costs no longer battle points to upgrade them. So you can save those precious coins and buy yourself a new waifu instead. FBI open up! Whoops. Also all the talents will be unlocked after your emblem reaches level 20 which is huge for beginners. The only exception goes to the basic common emblem because you need to upgrade this one to level 40 before unlocking the last talent. And yes the talents from this emblem are actually useful. Talents are also no longer restricted to a specific emblem which means every emblem will only serve as the basic attribute increaser. So you can freely pick your talents no matter which emblem you use. This means for example that Layla could use the mage talent bargain hunter to reduce the equipment cost. This opens up 3584 possible combinations for your emblem and talents and while the number sounds very intimidating you will only use a few combinations according to your hero's type. Also unlike the old emblem system that forced you to set up your emblem before the match started you can now change the emblem and talents during the drafting phase which is probably the best change they have made. It gives you a lot more flexibility as you can adjust your talents according to the enemy's lineup and pick the best talents that fits the particular match. So let's break down the attributes and talents for each emblem first before we explain you which combination you should use for which hero type. Basic common emblem. It increases your hybrid regen, HP and adaptive attack. In case you don't know what hybrid regen means, it means the amount of HP and mana you gain every second. Meanwhile adaptive attack gives you physical attack or magic power gain based on your highest extra attribute. So for example if you're using Nana and buy magic equipment, adaptive attack will raise her magic power instead of physical attack. Tank emblem. It increases your HP, hybrid defense and HP regen. Hybrid defense gives you extra physical physical and magic defense at once. So don't be fooled by the low amount of hybrid defense because it's pretty OP especially in the early game as you'll be more attacked from both physical and magic damage. This emblem gives you great survivability against all sources of damage. Assassin emblem. It increases your adaptive penetration, adaptive attack and movement speed. Just like adaptive attack, adaptive penetration works in the same manner. It will change into physical penetration or magic penetration depending on your highest extra attribute. This emblem is a perfect fit for every assassin regardless their damage type as it deals huge damage against enemies and is also one of the only two emblems that gives you extra movement speed through attributes. Mage emblem. It increases your magic power, cooldown reduction and mana regen. So all things that a mage can make use of. Fighter emblem. It increases your spell vamp, adaptive attack and hybrid defense. Just for a short reminder, spell vamp grants you HP whenever you deal damage using skills regardless of your damage time. This emblem grants you the perfect attributes for any frontliners that deals and receive damage all the time. Support emblem. It increases your healing effect, cooldown reduction and movement speed. Healing effect as the name suggests gives extra healing. Genius I know. This emblem is perfect for heroes with healing skills to support their team. Marksman emblem. Boom boom. It increases your attack speed, adaptive attack and lifesteal. Unlike the old lifesteal effect it doesn't care about the damage type anymore. So magic damage marksmen like Nathan can use it now. This emblem is perfect for DPS marksmen. Now let's move on to the tier 1, 2 and 3 talents. In the first tier we got 8 talents that gives you basic attributes. 
Thrill gives 16 adaptive attack, Swift gives 10% attack speed, Vitality gives 225 extra max HP, Rupture gives 5 adaptive penetration, Inspire gives 5% cooldown reduction, Firmness gives 6 hybrid defense, Agility gives 5% movement speed, and Fatal gives 5% crit chance and 10% crit damage. Since they are all very straightforward, I'm not going to bore you with the explanations. So let's take a look at the second tier talents right away. Life Drain restores 3% HP for every minion kill and 1.5% for every assist. It is definitely more powerful than before as you don't have to last hit minions anymore to trigger the effect. But it still gets overshadowed by the other talents. Season Hunter increases your damage against the Lord and the Turtle by 15%. This bonus is halved against regular jungle creeps and it doesn't affect your retribution. This is a pretty big change as it increased your damage before by 20%. And it also gave you extra damage against turrets which was removed. But you also get some extra damage against regular creeps now, which now makes this talent really fitting for junglers only. Tenacity gives you 18 hybrid defense when your HP is below 50%, which means they basically half the effect of this talent which gave you 35 defense before, but as it's a 2 tier instead of a tier 3 talent now, it's understandable. Still, this talent is great for tanks as it gets triggered earlier now and it gives them a nice amount of defense in the early game. Master Assassin increases your damage by 4% if there is only one enemy hero nearby. This is basically the budget version of the previous Master Assassin, but again, it is a tier 2 talent now which means it must be weaker. Bargain Hunter reduced the equipment price by 5% now. This change hits some heroes pretty hard who needed a low item price, but since you can use it on every hero now, it can be abused by heroes who couldn't use it before. Like late man marksman for example who can scale earlier now. Festival of blood grants you 6% spell vamp and every hero kill or assist will give you 0.5% extra spell vamp up to 8 stacks. So you can get up to 10% spell vamp instead of 20% like before. Still, the trigger condition for the stacks is much easier now as assists will also count instead of just kills. Pull yourself together reduces the battle spell and equipment's active skill cooldown by 15%. Compared to the old talent, the new talent no longer shortens your death timer, but it can shorten your flicker and wind of nature cooldown, which is pretty OP. As a 1-1 one -one main, this is certainly a talent I need to try out on my 1-1 one -one Nico channel. Weapon Master lets you gain 5% more physical attack and magic power from equipments, emblems, talents, and skill effects. This is way less useful for marksmen who could gain 15% extra physical attack from their items and emblems before but it can be used by all heroes now which is nice. On the third and final tier we have Impure Rage that gives you 50 to 260 adaptive damage after dealing damage to an enemy. Triggering this effect will either restore 2% mana or 1% HP if your hero doesn't use mana. And it has a 5 second cooldown. This is certainly a good talent for heroes who like to poke and therefore are mana hungry. Quantum Charge grants you 40% movement speed for 1.5 seconds and 75 to 180 HP when you deal damage with a basic attack. This has an 8 second cooldown. Nothing really changed compared to the former version, which means marksmen who used this talent before can still use it. But also other heroes who use basic attacks can use this for the extra movement speed. For example, Argus and Yin. Concusive Blast lets you deal 100 plus 7% total HP damage to nearby enemies after using a basic attack. This has a 15 second cooldown. A little bit lower damage, but it gets triggered right away, which is nice. It's still a must have talent for tanks with AoE skills. Killing Speed restores 8% max HP and gives you extra 15% movement speed for 3 seconds. This talent got a pretty big nerf which affects the heroes who used it before. But since every hero can use it now, magic assassins will surely enjoy it. Lethal Ignition deals 162 to 750 adaptive damage after you deal damage equal to 7% of the enemy's max HP 3 times within 5 seconds. Oh, this sentence doesn't roll off the tongue. It has a 15 second cooldown. This is still the go-to talent for all burst mages. Brave Smite restores 5% of your max HP after dealing skill damage to enemies, which has a 6 second cooldown. This is perfect for all sustained fighters as they can regen their HP. Focusing Mark enhances allied heroes damage by 6% for 3 seconds. This triggers after dealing damage to an enemy and has a cooldown of 4 seconds. Before this was a more or less dead talent, but with the nerf of pull yourself together and the removal of Avarice, it will be used much more 
more often by support heroes. I even saw a fanny already flying around with it, but psh, we don't want to spoil the new meta. Weakness Finder debuffs your enemy's movement speed by 90% and attack speed by 50% for 0.5 seconds. Your basic attack has a 20% chance of triggering this effect and it has a 2 seconds cooldown. And they remove the condition that it has to be a ranged attack. So DPS heroes like Zilong can use this talent now to lock down their enemies. I know these were many information, but you really needed them. As we will now explain to you which combinations are the most effective for each hero type. But one important note here. As it's the nature of the game, there will be exploits for certain heroes that haven't been discovered yet. These usually only get revealed once all players, especially those in high elo and the pros, start to experiment with it. One thing that will be interesting, for example, is how people will handle the movement speed changes. As only the assassin and support emblem gives you extra movement speed from their attributes now. Will everyone use the agility talent to get more movement speed? Or is this change not affecting the meta at all? I can imagine both, so only time will tell how the meta evolves over the next weeks and months. So let's get to the recommendation that certainly work well for all heroes in the beginning, but we will also make some takes that are worth being tried out. Jungle Tanks! Acting as the punching bag for the team, the recommended pick for this role is the Tank Emblem, because it gives huge HP and defense bonuses to survive longer in a fight. For the talents, it's the best to pick Vitality and Agility for the first tier. Vitality grants huge HP to help you jungle faster in combination with Molten Essence, while Agility helps you to walk faster during rotation. Season Hunter and Tenacity are the best fit for the second tier. Season Hunter helps you to farm quicker with the extra bonus damage and also helps you to faster clear the turtle and the lord which is essential as a jungler, while Tenacity keeps you alive during a team fight. As the third tier you can pick Concusive Blast as the safest option because it helps you to dish out AoE damage on enemies who pile up around you. Brave Smite also works though as it gives you a nice regen every 5 seconds during a long fight. Jungle Burst! Yes, magic damage assassins like Karina are now in the same category as physical damage assassins. Acting as the damage dealer or executor of the team, the recommended pick for this role is the Assassin Emblem. It has the highest adaptive penetration in the game, so it's a powerful attribute to ignore the low defense of squishy enemies. Remember, penetration lets you deal way more damage than simple physical attack. In the first tier, Rupture and Agility is probably the best talent that fit the role. Rupture gives gives extra adaptive penetration to help you to secure kills in the early game and agility for a bit extra movement speed. A hero like Ling who benefits a lot from crit damage could also use Fatal. For the second tier it's a choice between Season Hunter and Master Assassin. You can never go wrong with the extra damage from Master Assassin, especially if you're using a hero with a strong ganking power, while Season Hunter is again super important for the turtle and lord fight. You could also try Weapon Master to increase the damage of all your attack items, which could be the best talent for Saber who really benefits from it. As tier 3 talent many will probably choose Killing Spree, but I would say that Lethal Ignition is probably the best tier 3 talent for Burst Assassins. On max level you deal 750 adaptive damage which is a huge extra blow, so I'm pretty sure that this will become the new meta talent for Burst Assassins. Moving on to the next role, Roma Tank. The OG Romas have only one choice, the Tank Emblem. It gives you HP, Defense and HP Regen. The three most important attributes for a brave warrior. Well, that's only half true, as Lolita and Minotaur could also use the support emblem. As for the first tier talent, you have many choices. You can go with Vitality, Firmness, Agility or Inspire because all work pretty good. On the second tier, Tenacity and Pull Yourself Together is a viable choice. Pull Yourself Together will be a game changer for every Roma because it shortened the battle spell and active item cooldown, which includes the cooldown reduction of your concealed spell and tenacity lets you survive better in the early game, which is very useful when you want to invade the enemy's jungler in the early game. On the third tier, Concusive Blast, Brave Smite and Four Focusing Mark will be a popular pick. Next, Roma Support. For them, the support emblem is the way to go. The first tier talent goes to Vitality, Inspire and Agility. As second tier, you use Pull Yourself Together or Bargain Hunter, which is useful for a Roma as you can get your items earlier. And the third talent goes to focusing mark for the extra support. Roma damage. 
Dodge. Picked as a balance to fill the offensive side when your team uses their jungle tank, their objective is to roam around, grant information on the map and seek for blood. Pick the assassin emblem to maximize your early power spike and bully the enemy's damage dealer. For the first tier talent, Rupture and Agility is your best choice. On the second tier talent, Master Assassin and Weapon Master help you to secure the kills. And Bargain Hunter helps you to get your core items earlier. As tier 3 talent, pick Lethal Ignition which synchronizes perfect with your Dire Hit Boots effect. Mid lane Burst. They need the Mage Emblem for obvious reasons. As the first tier talent, it's recommended to pick Rupture, Inspire or Agility. For the second tier, you actually have many choices as well. Weapon Master for more magic power from your items. Pull yourself together for the lower spell cooldown and the lower cooldown on Winter Trunction if you use it. Bargain Hunter because, well, you know what? and the master assassin to ambush lonely targets. It's really up to your playstyle which suits you the best. As the third talent, picking lethal ignition is a must, as you need those extra burn effect to kill squishy opponents. Mid lane poke harass. Slightly different from the burst mages, poke mages uses their low cooldowns to spam their skills and scrape the enemies bit by bit. They are also notorious for annoying CC effects and huge AoE. It's still the best to pick the mage emblem for them. For the first tier talent, you Use Inspire or Agility. As the second tier, go for Bargain Hunter as you did before as well. And for the third tier talent, it is the best to use Impure Rage or again Lethal Ignition. You may realize that Lethal Ignition will most likely become very popular. Gold Lane DPS. Filled with old school standard marksmen that carry the game in the late game, their main source of damage comes from basic attacks. So the Marksman Emblem is your best choice. As for the first tier talent, Marksman got a lot of choices depending on how you want to play them. Thrill and Rupture can be picked for better early game damage, but Swift gives you another dose of attack speed which is perfect for heroes like 1-1. One -One. Inspire and Agility can be also used by Marksman like Claude and Carry, while Fatal is a must pick for heroes with crit builds like Bruno and Aerothil. On the second tier talent, it's the best to use Weapon Master or Master Assassin. You might think about the discount talent, but in my opinion, 5% is too small for a marksman to benefit from it. I think you're better off with more damage output, but try it out for yourself. As tier 3 talent, you can go with Quantum Charge, Killing Spree or Weakness Finder. Gold Lane Burst. Different from the other marksmen, Burst Heroes relies on raw firepower to surprise the enemies. They pack a massive punch per hit, but are a little bit more inconsistent with their damage output. These guys work the best with the Assassin Emblem. For the first tier talent, you should use Rupture or Agility. Every single penetration counts for burst heroes, but extra movement speed is also great. As a second tier talent, use Weapon Master or Bargain Hunter. And the final tier should be filled with Quantum Charge or Killing Spree. Quantum Charge is a pretty good choice when combined with long range heroes, while Killing Spree makes them a savage machine every time they kill an enemy. In Brody's case, it can be also filled with Lethal Ignition, as he can trigger the effect easily with his ult. XB Lane Sustain. As frontlaners who deals and receive damage all the time, these type of heroes needs a lot of sustainability from their emblem and talents, with proper spell vamp and defense. The fighter emblem is usually enough to handle the incoming damage, but you can always go hard and use the tank emblem. The first tier talent must be inspire or firmness, but you can also go for agility because rotation exists. The second tier will be festival of blood or tenacity. Combined with the fighter emblem and when festival of blood reached its full stacks, it gives you a whopping 20% spell them from the emblem and talents alone. This is equally strong to a bloodlust axe. For the final tier, brave smite or conclusive blood are the safest options. XP laner damage. Focus on dealing as much damage as they can. These heroes has an explosive damage output but are fairly weak in CC power. The assassin emblem works best with them since they need as much penetration as possible. For the first talent you should go with rupture and agility. For the second talent, master assassin and weapon master will keep your damage high. If you are planning on building a full damage build, go with weapon master. And if you need some defensive equipment to survive a 1v1 and planning ambush games, it's okay to pick Weapon Master. As last tier talent, it has to be either Quantum Charge or Lethal Ignition. Quantum Charge gives you a nice movement speed bonus to chase or escape, while Lethal Ignition again gives you a nice dose of extra damage. XB Laner Flank. As the name suggests, these heroes flank enemies from the side or come from behind. They have a decent sustainability and are able to bypass the enemy's front line with ease. With a proper build, one single combo is often 
isn't enough to eliminate the enemy squishy, so pick the fighter or assassin emblem to complement your item build. The first tier talent has to be agility or rupture. Agility helps you to close into the target better, while rupture will make sure that the target dies after you lock onto them. As a second tier talent you can use festival of blood, weapon master and master assassin. Just pick whatever playstyle suits you the best. And for the last tier go for brave smite or killing spree, so you can easily flank your enemies and escape in time. But are you actually confident in your ability to flank the enemy's backline? Flanking requires both macro and micro skills at play, especially because you need to know which hero you need to target. I will tell you a little spoiler, your target isn't always the squishy damage dealer. So if you want to learn more about it, check out this awesome guide where you learn how to win every team fight. See you later!